Though evil spirits and demons seem like the stuff of fiction, these extreme cases could make you believe otherwise. Many people throughout history have become victims to demonic possession, so let's explore the top 5 cases of demonic possession. Arnie Johnson The case of Arnie Johnson is the first known court case in the United States during which the defense attempted to prove that the defendant was not guilty by reason of possession. In 1981, Arnie Johnson murdered his landlord, Alan Bono, in Connecticut. Johnson's attorney argued that his actions indicated a pattern of erratic behavior that had begun when Johnson was just a child. Johnson's family even consulted with demonologists, Ed and Lorraine Warren. Therefore, the lawyers argued that the child had been tormented and harassed by unknown entities for most of his life. They asserted that his evil doings resulted not from a psychological disorder, but from a demonic possession. Ultimately, the judge ruled that demonic possession was not a valid defense against first degree murder. Johnson was convicted, but he only served a mere five years of his 10 to 20 year sentence. Julia. In 2008, Dr. Richard Gallagher, a board certified psychiatrist and professor at New York Medical College, documented the case of a patient named Julia whom he concluded was indeed possessed by demons. It is rare that a scientist would acknowledge the possibility of possession, typically doctors, as they think possession is either fraudulent or rather the result of a mental illness. Dr. Gallagher personally observed items flying around the room, Julia levitating off the bed, speaking in tongues, and knowing things about people around her that she could not possibly have known. Here is a statement Gallagher wrote. Julia would go into trances, of a recurring nature. Mentally troubled individuals often dissociate, but Julia's trances were accompanied by an unusual phenomenon. Out of her mouth would come various threats, taunts, and languages, phrases such as, leave her alone, you idiot, she's ours, leave you stupid priest. The tone of this voice was different from Julia's, and it varied, sometimes sounding dark and masculine, and at other points sounding very high pitched, most of her comments during these trances displayed a marked contempt for anything religious or sacred. Clara Seal In 1906, Clara Seal was a Christian student at St. Michael's Mission in Natal, South Africa. For some reason, Clara prayed to and made a pact with Satan when she was 16 years old, and just days later was overtaken by strange impulses. She was repulsed by religious artifacts such as crucifixes. She could speak and understand several languages of which she had no previous knowledge and she became clairvoyant regarding the thoughts and histories of people around her. Nuns who attended to Clara reported that she produced horrible animalistic sounds. She also levitated up to five feet in the air. Eventually, two priests were brought in to perform an exorcism. Clara tried to strangle one of the priests with his stole and over 170 people witnessed her levitating as the priest read scriptures. Over the course of two days, the rites of exorcism successfully drove the dark spirits from her body. Ronald Doe Known as the real story behind the novel and Hollywood movie The Exorcist, the tale of 14-year-old Ronald Doe is the most notorious stories of demonic possession. In fact, Ronald Doe is not his real name, it is assigned to him by the Catholic Church in order to preserve the boy's privacy. In the late 1940s, Doe's aunt encouraged him to use a Ouija board, and many speculate that after her death the boy attempted to contact his aunt with the Ouija board, an act which opened the door for demons who wished to possess him. The possession started with strange sounds like dripping water that no one could place. Eventually, religious artifacts began to quake and fly off the walls and unexplained footsteps and scratching noises could be heard from around the house. Scratches began to appear on the boy's body, including words that seemed to have been carved into the boy's flesh by unseen claws. The boy spoke in a dark voice and levitated in the air. His family brought in a Catholic priest who determined that the boy was possessed by evil spirits and needed an exorcism. The exorcism was performed over 30 times, with the boy injuring the priest many times. When at last the rite was successful, the entire hospital heard Doe's cries of anguish 
and reported a horrible sulfuric odour hanging in the air. Annelise Michel The story of Annelise Michel is a controversial one and is the inspiration for many films, most notable the 2005 courtroom drama horror film The Exorcism of Emily Rose. 16-year-old Annelise Michel had a history of epilepsy and mental illness for which she had often been treated at a psychiatric hospital. However, in 1973, Annelise became suicidal, rejected all religious artifacts, drank her own urine and began to hear voices. Medicine did nothing to help the girl. She begged her family to bring in a priest because she believed that she was possessed by demons. Though her request was rejected, two local priests secretly began treating her with exorcism rites. Meanwhile, her parents stopped treating her epilepsy and mental disorders. Annalise had almost 70 exorcisms performed on her over the course of 10 months. She refused to eat and often talked of dying. She was dead within a year. Annalise Michelle died from starvation. Consequently, her parents and the priest responsible were charged with neglect homicide. Whether you believe demonic possession is real or not, there's no doubting that these stories are creepy. If anyone knows any more information about this subject or explanations, please leave a comment below. Thank you for watching.